welcome back. If you just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 on Channel Television, coming to you live from Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Mixed reactions greet President Buhari's refusal to sign the Electoral Act Amendment Bill at the National Assembly. President Muhammadu Buhari and other presidential candidates sign a peace accord to guide the conduct of candidates for the 2019 general elections. Nigeria Elections Debate Group and the Broadcasting Organizations of Nigeria release names of participating parties in the presidential debates. And UK Prime Minister Theresa May meets with UK leaders over Brexit after facing stiff opposition in Parliament. CV.com has more information for you and on youtube.com forward slash channels web you can watch our videos. You can also watch us on your mobile device via your browser or download the Channel TV app for Android and iOS devices from their respective stores. Besides giving you access to news updates on the go, the Channel TV and Channels 24 app has an eyewitness feature that you can use to share pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and then follow the instructions. Now let's take a look at some of those stories that you sent into our portal and let's start off with this picture from a male toilet at the University of Calabar Teaching Hospital. If you can have the pictures, according to our eyewitness, there it is. The state of the toilet is embarrassing and he's calling on the government to look into it immediately. And the next one is a picture from Area 3 Junction in Abuja, the capital city. According to our eyewitness reporter, the road is one of the major access ones within the FCT, and he's calling on the relevant government agencies to fix it. Finally, we have this image from a road in Edo State showing the dilapidated state of the road. Eyewitness reporter says the contract was awarded by the federal government five years ago, but was abandoned by the contractor, and he's calling on the federal government to come to their aid quickly. Thanks a lot for all the pictures that you sent in and do keep them coming in to us on the portal. All is now set for the 2019 presidential debates being organized by the Nigeria Elections Debate Group and the Broadcasting Organizations of Nigeria. The organizers released the names of participating parties at the end of its meeting in Abuja today. The parties that will be taking place in the debate are the Allied Congress Party of Nigeria, the Alliance for New Nigeria, All Progressives Congress, the People's Democratic Party, and the Young Progressive Party. In a statement signed by the Executive Secretary of the NEDG, Eddie Emissary, the Vice Presidential Debate will hold on Friday, December the 14th from 7 p.m. at the Transcor Hilton Hotel, Abuja, while the Presidential Debate will hold at the same venue on Saturday, January the 19th. The statement adds that the debates will be transmitted live on all Bonn member stations and its affiliates, while they will be live streaming on all social media platforms. And we're still looking at preparations for the elections and the Nigeria Immigration Service has so far retrieved more than 700 voters cards from non-Nigerians. The Comptroller General of Immigration, Mr. Mohammed Babandede, who disclosed this in Abuja, says the service has set up structures to ensure that movement at the border is restricted during the polls. This year we have retrieved over 700 voters cards from non-Nigerians uh, who will be there during election to ensure that non-Nigerians don't participate. They don't vote and they are not voted. During election will ensure the borders are secure so that nobody will enter within the days of election. Uh, we are a law enforcement officers so that we block, we block anybody who is going to temper with the electoral system. During the time of election, what we do, and it's common issues at our land borders, is that we stop uh, mobility within the period of the election time. But the airports can move through, and uh, things would be better if it is well controlled. We have structures at the border for our staffs in terms of welfare. We have changed the pattern of patrol at the borders by ensuring that border patrol is not only meant for people to stop and check and collect bribe from people, but to patrol along the flanks of the border. How to curb hate speech in fake news ahead of the elections has been a dominant issue and has been one issue at the National Council of Information Conference holding in Kaduna State. The meeting was attended by state commissioners of information, heads of parastatals and agencies under the aegis of the Federal Ministry of Information, among other stakeholders. 
Speaking at the opening ceremony, the Director General of the National Broadcasting Commission asked broadcast media organizations to be professional in their reportage, especially during campaigns and the elections. The meeting of the National Council of Information usually brings stakeholders together to brainstorm on issues aimed at moving the sector forward. The focus this year is on addressing activities that can incite violence, especially as the 2019 election draws nearer. With the theme tackling fake news and hate speech to enhance peace and national unity, participants, including representatives of the Kaduna State Government, are here to deliberate on the trend and come up with recommendations. Fake news is a challenge that will require multiple, multiple efforts to contain. We need to empower our people with high levels of media literacy. There is so much information that is readily available, and increasingly, people require tools to distinguish facts from fiction. People must be encouraged to question what they read or view and to share only what they have verified as facts. In many climes, the media, which plays a big role in disseminating information, stands accused of perpetuating fake news. The Director General of the National Broadcasting Commission asks media organizations to ensure they do not run foul of the law. If you look generally in the, in the social space in the country, especially with uh, emissions from the social media space, there's a lot of hate and dangerous speech that's been posited. And some of this has also seeped into the conventional or traditional broadcast media, uh, print media, and so on. So it's very good to concentrate minds uh, in, in a forum like this about the dangers that these issues pose it for our country. For the Commissioner of Information of Adamawa State, fake news and hate speech, which he believes are contributing factors in the herders and farmers' conflicts in the country, must be curbed. We discovered that there are some people whom we call conflict merchants, people who benefit from every conflict that takes place <laughs> in not only in this country but even all over the world, who are expanding our natural fault lines of region, religion and ethnicity. Another important issue raised here is the need for proper sensitization of the public on fundamental rights such as freedom of speech on the one hand and on the other hand the penalty for hate speech. Let's cross over to Abuja now. Here's Ibrahim Adra. Hey, Ibrahim. Thank you for joining us in Abuja, Ijeoma. Let's start from the National Assembly, where the Senate has stepped down till further notice the confirmation of nominees for appointment as members of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, and the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, ICPC. The decision follows complaints by some lawmakers that none of the nominees for the EFCC board is from the South-South or Southeast, thereby violating the principle of federal character. Correspondent Linda Higby reports. The nominees gave in-depth responses. To the question there is no hint that this report, which the chairman of the Committee on Anti-Corruption, Senator Chukuka Utazi, is presenting, would later on cause a row. It's a report on the confirmation of board members for the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, which precedes that of board members of the Independent Corrupt Practices and other related offenses commission, ICPC. The committee is satisfied that the nominees have the requisite experience, integrity, professional competence, and industry to discharge the functions of the positions they were nominated into. There are four nominees for the EFCC board confirmation. The nominees are from Kogi, Yobe, Kano, and Oyo states, while the ICPC has nine nominees, two nominees each from the Southwest, Southeast, North Central and Northwest, and one from the South South. But lawmakers from the South South and the Southeastern part of the country are emphatically opposed to the nomination of the candidates for the EFCC board. The Southeast and the South South are obviously not accommodated in the commission. For us not to have anybody from the South South or from the Southeast in the NDD, I mean in the EFCC, what does that portend? that these are the criminals. You are taking people from other geopolitical zones to, of course, come and investigate them. This is the picture 
that is being printed. And it is wrong. The opposition elicits contributions of lawmakers from other parts of the country to the debate. As it is now, the law is not infringed upon. We are guided by the law. And I think only an amendment can cure it. The chairman is from Southeast. And we are talking about shortchanging the Southeast. The chairman was there. He should have talked to you or the leadership. If they observed this, that would have been corrected, not necessarily coming here. But Senator Dume's comments angers the committee chairman, who tries to offer an explanation. I have something to say, Mr. President. I have something to say, Mr. President. Sensing that the situation in the chamber may degenerate, the Senate president calls for an impromptu executive session. After the executive session, the Senate president discloses the decision of the upper chamber. The Senate result to step down the constitution of two reports for further legislative consultations on the nominees. Another confirmation, which has practically been on hold for one year and ten months, is a confirmation of the EFCC chairman, Ibrahim Magu, who the Senate rejected in 2017, but is still the acting EFCC chairman. Linda Akibe, Channels Television News. In another development, the vice presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Mr. Peter Obi, has been making case for an intellectual economy in Nigeria. Addressing members of the youth wing of the Christian Association of Nigeria in Abuja, Mr. Obi explained that Nigeria must stop depending on oil, which he described as a diminishing asset. A former Anambra state governor challenged the youth to take up the task of changing the narrative in Nigeria. <laughs> Can we change the narratives in this country? Yes. And you can change it. And then nobody tell you. It's not about issue of, some will say, to win the oil price. That's it. That's it. That's, for me, whenever I hear it, I feel pain. A country cannot depend in future on a diminishing aspect called oil. The country with the biggest oil reserve today is Venezuela. $23 trillion worth of oil. Yes, it's a collapsed country. Even in America, where you have huge oil in, in Texas, Texas is not the richest state in America. Texas GDP is $1.4 trillion, with a per capita of 38. California without oil, is 2.6 trillion with a per capita of over 50. New York, it was the sixth. And you can go on and on. Who is talking about oil today? That's a diminishing asset. When people are talking about intellectual economy, we're talking about baggage economy. That baggage shouldn't be our problem. And from Anambra, the state governor, Willie Obiano, has asked contractors handling road projects across the state to commence asphalting of areas with completed earthwork so guide against road failure. Governor Obiano gave the directive while inspecting the Oguanyocha and Orefite road projects where he commended the quality and pace of work. When the news at 10 returns, road diagnostics advocate stronger collaboration between government and private providers towards an improved and sustainable healthcare system in Nigeria. To join us again.